So how's everybody doing? This is what's technically known as the hump, halfway through. Um, and uh, uh, does anybody want to sort of share any uh, uh, problems that they overcame that, uh, or epiphanies? Um, uh, I apologize for screwing up that uh, shell script. That was, I thought I had tested it, but I was fooling myself when I tested it. And uh, that got corrected. The mode button. Yeah, the mode button uh, will put the, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. The mode button will put the joystick into a different mode and uh, it remaps the axes. And also there's a little switch here on the bottom that uh, it works best if it's on X rather than O. I should have mentioned that. That's the default. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and I find that the, um, uh, I have some wireless uh, ones of these things. Uh, they're not much more expensive, but they're, um, uh, they're really annoying for students because they go to sleep. Um, and if you press the right button to wake them up from sleep, everything's fine. If you press, press the mode button, then they get into a different mode, and then it's like full flail. Um, and also, you lose, they're, they're not, um, the, uh, wireless, the wireless USB dongles are not programmable. And so if you lose that, then it's, then it's a brick. So um, um, any uh, comments, question, comments, questions, suggestions? All right, let's dive in. Um, is the um, I'm, get, I'm sensing that the format is kind of working out okay for people. That that um, I'll try to just cover the high points of things, and um, and then try to maximize the time that you can work on things. And uh, if you take the entire time or more, that's that's fine. If you take less than that, then you can dive off to uh, to investigate other things uh, because there's a large ecosystem to explore. And if you want suggestions on what to explore, if you have extra time, let me know, and I'll be happy to provide suggestions. Um, so. Uh, uh, the um, so this module um, is about um, uh, the uh, universal robot description format and robot state publisher and uh, roughly speaking uh, when I did a little demo yesterday um, where we had uh, the robot um, being displayed in RViz and clearly uh, it was uh, we were streaming uh, real-time state data from my edge uh, and uh, that was making it into RViz and uh, presenting a representation and we saw that there was a marker type uh, called robot model uh, which which handled uh, representing the robot and we can have multiple robot models uh, living in living in RViz and so so you're going to do that uh, this, after this afternoon uh, for the edge and um, I want to walk you uh, through uh, the basics of, of that. Um, uh, the data flow that you're going to be using is shown here. Um, and this is all on the web page. Um, uh, so you're going to reuse things that you've already built. Uh, you uh, have used the Python join node that publishes the join message. Um, you wrote a node that publishes a twist, uh, to edge emit command. Um, here's the robot. Uh, the wireless Ethernet, the Wi-Fi is here uh, in this gap. Um, the uh, EdgeMIP balance ROS node uh, is publishing EdgeMIP state. Color is a bug. We ignore it. Um, and uh, what uh, we can't quite see here, because it's going off the edge of the screen, sorry about that. Um, over here is um, the, um, the flow of data is that there's a pre-built um, uh, node uh, that you can look at the source code for, and it's called Robot State Publisher. And we're going to run a copy of, of these, of, sorry, take uh, the Robot State Publisher here. We're going to run a copy of that. And what the uh, Robot State Publisher does is it loads up a description of the robot that's in ERDEF format that specifies all the, where the links and joints are and how they relate, gives names to all the joints, and then you're going to write a program here which reads that special edge of state command and it publishes a standardized joint state command. It's going to be a list of joint names and a list of joint positions, either linear or angular. Um, and um, the robot state publisher is going to load up your, your universal robot uh, description format, ERDEF file, and say, OK, I know how the links are connected. I just need to know the angles or the positions, of the linear positions of the joints. Once it has both of those pieces of information and it has the TF um, of the base of the robot, um, then it can publish the TF of all the links on the robot. Um, and so we're going to chase that through. 
um, and you're going to make that all happen in source code. Um, and so, um, so module four, um, the URDF documentation, uh, this is not just yada yada yada, you really do want to uh, look at this. The URDF documentation is uh, pretty nice actually, better than average. Um, and uh, so you can look at the URDF documentation for uh, links and the link element and there's some sort of uh, bad graphics here going on, um, but it gives you a sense of what's going on, that a link consists of a visual representation of the link, a simplified external hull, uh, which is used for detecting collisions, and a link has a, uh, a link origin um, and a link coordinate system. Um, and uh, documentation for joints, transmissions, uh, models and model states. What we, we need, what we need for this one is you need to read the documentation for links, and joints. Um, those are the two things that we're going to need. Um, you need to read about joint state publisher um, and a little bit about what Ross workspaces. Uh, workspaces. Um, and uh, we're going to be working from a tutorial, um, uh, the URDF tutorials. Um, and uh, the URDF tutorials use, um, there's a package for that uh, described here. Um, it's URDF tutorial. Um, uh, package and it lives under your uh, Katkin workspace. So over here, um, um, there is a um, uh, uh, RM, I'm sorry, RDF tutorial. make. Um, so if I do raw CD, in, in this tutorial, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to um, uh, do the tutorial learning URDF step by step. Right here. So I want you to go through this tutorial and this tutorial, the first four tutorials is what you want. You don't need to go on to the fifth. That's what we'll do tomorrow morning. If you want to go on to that, and, uh, then that's great. So do these first tutorials and you know everything you need to know about to, about, about URDFs. And so in the first tutorial, um, uh, we first we want to learn about links um, and, um, and the ROS launch command uh, is to uh, run um, a, a copy of RViz that will load up um, the description file. And by default, um, ROS CD RDF tutorial, sorry. Um, by default, there is, op, there is an RDF tutorial loaded on your system, uh, and it's out in OpRos Kinetic Share RDF tutorial. Um, and the problem with using this is that we can't edit that unless you, you're sudo and, you, and it's considered bad juju if you edit in OpRos when you're just hacking around for user things. Um, so uh, instead, um, I've asked you in the tutorial up here at the top to pull that to clone your own copy of this tutorial so you can edit it. I'd like you to be able to hack in the uh, in the sample files, not just load up the sample files and say, oh, that's how it works and then move on. I'd like you to be able to hack on them. So copy that um, and um, get clone, oh, sorry, CD source. So get clone your, a copy of URDF tutorial into your workspace um, and Make sure it gets processed properly by Catkin. And you can see it was listed there as the last directory it's going to traverse through. There's nothing actually to compile in it. And now if I do um, ROS CD URDF tutorial, um, then I'm still going, ah, it still went to OpRos Kinetic URDF tutorial. So it looks like I've got a 
didn't it didn't update the cache, so do a ROS pack profile ROS CD RDF tutorial, um, and now it uh, it CD to um, uh, home LW ROS CAT can workspace source RDF tutorial RDF tutorial. So there was a, a cache failure there where it didn't it brought still brought me back to the system directory. ROS pack profile forced it to rebuild the cache. Um, and normally, if you do a tab completions, uh, on the second tab, it'll rebuild the cache. Um, and uh, that's why sometimes it hesitates a little bit. Um, and uh, so where are we? Um, um, we're in Erdef tutorial. And this tutorial was recently restructured. Um, I'm in. Um, uh, Gacking workspace source Erdef tutorial here, and um, so I'm in Gacking workspace source Erdef tutorial, and the tutorial used to live right here. Um, uh, recently, this tutorial has been restructured so that there's uh, it contains sort of two packages as sub packages. One is Erdef tutorial, and the other one is Erdef sim tutorial that we're not going to use. And so uh, we need to CD down to the second level of Erdef uh, tutorial. And then uh, the commands that are in the tutorial will work. So we're going to be in um, uh, Kacken workspace source Erdef tutorial, Erdef tutorial. And what is here? Um, uh, we've got um, uh, things that we've seen before. We've got a launch directory, then we've got some new directories. We've got a, a directory for images. Got a directory for meshes, and we got a directory for erdef. Um, and so the robot description files normally live here. Um, uh, robot meshes that you make in Blender or something, if you want to make a three-dimensional representation, or you or you um, you eject a mesh out of um, out of uh, SolidWorks, um, all fair. Um, and you can load those meshes. And Arviz is smart about uh, displaying a lot of mesh types. Um, and images. Um, sometimes uh, you want to have um, uh, let's see, these images are just screenshots, actually, of things that are demonstrated in the, um, it's my recollection, is just, uh, or just screenshots of things that are, um, uh, uh, demo that will demonstrate in the tutorials, so they're not very important. Uh, launch file, um, now we've got one launch file, which is display.launch, and we'll look at that. And um, in the, Erdef directory. Um, there's uh, eight different um, uh, uh, Erdef files uh, that give examples of, of successive levels of complexity. And um, I'll run through a few of those with you. And, um, and in the tutorial uh, for learning Erdef step by step, um, uh, the first thing they do is they show File 01 uh, this is the file 01 hyphen my first erdef which is in the erdef subdirectory um, and this defines the most simple link so a robot in uh, erdef uh, in the erdef world consists of a collection of links that are connected in a star topology so there's no loops um, and normally there's one sort of uh, 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 uber or mama link um, which will be the base, and that will be like the body of the car or the base of the robot arm. Um, and uh, so this is XML, of course. The, uh, every um, uh, ERDF file begins with an XML uh, minimal version, a robot name, which names the robot. Um, and then uh, the robot consists of a series of links. So this is describing a robot consisting of one link. Uh, links don't have numbers, they have names. Uh, this has a name bank base link. And if you look at the uh, documentation, uh, you'll, see, you'll see that uh, links have um, uh, various properties. Uh, and one of the most basic properties is its visual representation. Um, uh, and this visual is going to be represented by a geometric object, which is a cylinder of length 0.6 meters and radius uh, 0.2 meters. And um, so there it is. 
and this ROS launch file uh, is going to launch um, the launch file display.launch with a command line argument of model equals erdf01 my first erdf uh, my first dot erdf <coughs> and since this is a relative reference here this is only going to work if um, my directory is erdf tutorial because this is not an absolute reference um, so I need to if you get a fail here then you uh, probably want to cd to this directory and um, so there's that command line and um, it's going to pop up a copy of RViz, and what we'll see with that. Um, is it's a little. Might want to pull that curtain. Um, uh, the um, uh, we've got the cylinder, and so there it is. It's uh, transparent, uh, and we could fiddle with parameters on it, um, uh, but. Um, uh, and and uh, it's being displayed. The thing that's being displayed is the robot model. So I can make it go away um, with the robot model. So what's up with this robot model? That's just a robot model. It's just a marker type that was added here. Can people see this at all, or should we pull that um, screen? Um, and So what you'll see is uh, the way this is hooked together, uh, it's really reasonably elegant. Um, the links are displayed here. Um, you can you can describe, you can uh, expand details on the links if you want. You can set the opacity, alpha, make it opaque, or make it really uh, transparent, zero. Um, that's alpha of 0.5. Um, and uh, if we look at the Oh, and ignore these um, uh, these errors. Um, there's some bugs with this tutorial, and you just have to ignore those errors. Let's go to the launch file that we just ran. So um, here are a couple more features of launch files that we're seeing for the first time, uh, or you may have done on your own. Um, uh, we'll define a bunch of default arguments. So these are d just default uh, parameters that the subsequent packages may be looking for. And this way, if we run the launch file without additional parameters, good things will happen. Um, nothing bad will happen. And um, uh, the default name for model is find erdf tutorial erdf01 my first um, uh, dot erdf. So um, this uh, launch file, if you don't give it any, any additional arguments on the ROS launch, um, uh, line and we did. We gave um, well, I can't see it here, but we gave the uh, uh, we gave this additional argument, um, which overrid the default model that was in the launch file. Uh, GUI is equal to true. Uh, GUI is equal to true. Uh, that's targeted at the joint state publisher, uh, and the joint state publisher um, is uh, will uh, if nobody is pus publishing joint sp uh, states and you set GUI to be true, it'll pop up a little GUI where you can do little sliders to modify the joints. Um, so it allows you to essentially test your ERDF uh, without having any real robot attaching, attached to providing information to it. And so um, the documentation, and one of the things I regret about uh, using XML here is that XML is really crappy in terms of permitting comments. And so as a result, these um, uh, sample launch files are really kind of cryptic because a couple of comments here would go a long way. Like just saying, like the GUI is equal true, that was targeted towards the joint state publisher. RViz config, um, that's the default RViz configuration file, um, and it's using find erdf tutorial, and it's an RViz, uh, uh, erdf.rviz, and you can edit that. Um, so it is something that you can read, RViz, erdf.rviz, and, and it is understandable. There's a lot of crap in here, um, uh, but, it's, but most of it is, makes sense when you look at it. Uh, and most of it corresponds to things that you have on your screen, um, the RViz uh, configuration file. When you change your, change your RViz configuration now, you'll be able to save it. So if I um, uh, it move my RViz configuration around, I move the default view, I can do file and save config, and that just saved that config file, and that's the config file that I'll load next time. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted you to pull down the package so you had right access to that directory, uh, to the uh, uh, RViz subdirectory of the thing. 
uh, so the, by, by convention, uh, the default uh, parameter name for the robot description is, the, uh, is robot description. And the default um, uh, payload of robot description, we, when we do a get parameter, um, is actually the contracts, is actually the, uh, the um, contents of the, um, of the erdf file. And this syntax here is not going to make a whole lot of sense right now. Normally, this would just be find the erdf file and load the erdf file. And when you get that, the, uh, the parameter ro robot description, you get the entire text of the erdf file in one line. Um, but it's an XML file, so it can parse. Um, Zachro is going to be in, in step four, um, in true tutorial four. Uh, and Zachro can eat an erdf file just fine. Um, but Zachro is a, is a macro la language for XML. Uh, because XML doesn't have, uh, you can't uh, declare sort of functions and arguments and things like that. You can't declare macros. Um, so it's incredibly tedious to program in. And so Zachro gives you some primitive macros so that if you want to define you know, like size of my robot and width of my robot and you want to use that, those parameters or color of my robot and you want to reuse those things in multiple places, you can do that. So you can make your robot parametric uh, rather, than, rather than it just straight line flat code. Um, uh, and so uh, this... Uh, is piping the uh, the model, which the the file, which could be a Zacro file or it could be an Erdf file. It's piping it through the Zacro uh, uh, preprocessor, and if Zacro gets a Erdf file uh, in its input, it just passes it right through. It doesn't do anything to it. Um, and um, uh, another use GUI argument, and I don't remember which one this one is for. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to check. And then um, we're going to launch three nodes. So this is all setting up parameters and arguments. The arguments um, are exist. The, the, the scope of the arguments is, is, is in this uh, XML here. Um, is, is, sorry, is in the uh, launch. They are not parameters. The scope of the parameters is, is that they actually become parameters that are available in the parameter server. Um, and so those are different. And you can easily understand the limitations of using one versus the other. Um, and um, the uh, joint state publisher um, uh, is uh, a uh, pre-built uh, uh, package, and so you can look it up in the Ross wiki. And we'll get kinetic. Um, and basically, it subscribes to a joint state message, and it publishes a bunch, of, and, it, and it reads the robot description. And then it has enough information to publish a bunch of TFs, to populate all the TFs. Um, and it has the, optionally, it can, um, uh, it can uh, pop up a GUI so you can do sliders. Um, and uh, the robot state publisher, um, oh, sorry, I, I misspoke. The joint state publisher is, is, a, is, a, is, a, uh, is a, little, a little widget that, uh, that allows you to um, uh, use a slider to publish joint states. It's the robot state publisher which reads the joint, reads the joint states um, and publishes TF. And RViz is also going to read the robot description and it's going to read the TF frames and it's going to give you the graphical representation. So that's the connection. So joint state publisher, um, look for ROS, uh, robot uh, state robot state publisher. So it takes joint states and publishes TF. And so, and it can publish a lot of, a lot of things. And it's got a bunch of arguments. Um, uh, and it has facilities for, uh, t for namespacing things. Uh, namespacing is supported pretty well uniformly. Um, and so in this tutorial, getting back to the tutorial, um, this is the first tutorial, um, and that's what pops up. Uh, for multiple shapes, we can specify um, uh, multiple links. Um, and so we've got a base link, and we've got a right leg, uh, which is going to be a box. and then. A joint is going to connect to the two, and it's going to be a, a fixed joint. So the joint name is uh, a unique name. The type of joint is fixed. It can be revolute uh, or translational. And the parent link and the child link, uh, straightforward. Um, and we'll need additional geometric arg arguments if we want to 
uh, control the position of that joint and the orientation of that joint. So those aren't specified here. And um, this command will bring up uh, these two things. And notice, since we didn't specify where the joints are, uh, the joints are all at zero, 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 which gives you a robot that's pretty compact, but not, not perhaps as useful as it could be. Um, and uh, origins, now we need to specify a little bit of geometry, and so you need to read the documentation so you understand uh, uh, how, to, how to specify the origin um, of a link, and then uh, and also how to specify the origin and orientation of a joint. And so we may want to rotate the joint by 90 degrees, by, two, by 270 degrees. And so this moves that box to the outside. Um, uh, now this was programmed by a computer scientist, um, and I should say that I have a secondary appointment in the Department of Computer Science, but the material uh, is blue. <laughs> um, and uh, when I explained that to my friends in the Department of Material Science, um, they thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, and so the, uh, the channels here are red, gene, green, blue, and alpha. Um, so it's sort of obvious, that's the default. Um, and so you can specify material, uh, which so far is the only color, um, and uh, you'll get something that looks like this. And then um, uh, we've got fixed joints, more fixed joints, um, more fixed joints, fixed, all fixed joints, and you can see this gets rather tedious. And when you run the launch file, you'll get this guy. Um, and if you throw a bunch of errors, uh, not these errors, but if you get a, a hard fault, then um, the this uh, sorry this. Sorry. So this uh, uses a gripper model with a mesh uh, from the PR2, and that's not loaded by default. Um, so if you get a bunch of hard errors and it fails, um, I've made a note here. So if you get an error, something like error could not load resource PR2 description message gripper blah 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 DAE, it's trying to load a mesh for the gripper, um, then just do a set pseudo app uh, get install ROS PR2 common and that'll load a buttload of PR2 files included, including all the meshes uh, for the PR2. And um, let's see, I've noted, I've noted that when you add a new package with overlay, if you don't get it, do a ROS pack profile. Um, and um, a step or a tutorial. So you go down through here, and then um, with the sixth one, we'll add movable joints. And so we're going to modify the ERDF uh, to add mo movable, movable joints, and we'll ask the robot joint state publisher to display its GUI. Um, and and so this goes through how to do movable joints. We're going to specify movable joints, and it has an axis orientation. Uh, so this is a unit vector along which the axis lies, um, and this is the uh, origin in the link of the um, of the uh, joint. And um, it needs a parent link, a base link. Uh, the joint needs to have a name, and its type uh, is a, a continuous. Um, uh, and swivel. And the gripper joints are revolute. Um, you can also add additional things, um, such as lower and upper bounds on velocity and effort, um, that will be used downstream. And so, just work through that. And um, we'll give a launch file here. So, ROS launch 
RDEF tutorial display launch. And I urge you to edit the, uh, these files a little bit to get used to using them. So we're popping up our vids, and that GUI is equal to true display this guy, this little slider thingy. And we can see that um, we've now assembled sort of a, a, a robot that has a lot of stuff. And uh, if I uh, slide the, uh, the header uh, swivel thingy around here, then um, the head moves around and so forth, so forth. Uh, so, and uh, there's one of the wheels, uh, left gripper joint, grippers moving in and out. Gripper extension, you get the idea. Um, and uh, so once you get through these tutorials, they really won't take too long. I do urge you to modify the files a little bit, um, uh, and it'll make more sense sooner. Um, I don't want to save the changes to my Arvis configuration, uh, so I'm going to uh, close without saying, saving. So uh, we saw in, if you look at this, the uh, URDF file uh, for this thing, it's actually really rather tedious. It's huge, and it goes on forever. Um, and uh, so I asked you to, uh, adding physical properties uh, is a short one. Um, so adding physical properties, um, uh, these are the properties, the visual properties um, that that we've been setting and the geometry um, uh, and uh, so color, material, things like that. Um, collision properties, oftentimes um, if you have a high resolution representation of a robot, you might have a mesh or something with a lot of features in it. And um, uh, other parts of the system, uh, there are other packages that can use the shape of the robot to do things like contact uh, collision detection and things like that. And if you've got a mesh with 50,000 triangles in it, doing collision detection is going to be computationally intensive. And so the collision property is essentially a, a simplified bounding box or bounding ge geometric object for simplified collision detection. RVIS and none of these packages actually do collision detection, but there are plenty of packages that do. Um, and this is where they'll look for this property. And you can set the collision property to be the same as the uh, geometry property. There's, there's no problem with that. Um, and uh, we won't use them here, um, and RVIS doesn't use them. But if you specify inertia, then that will be used. Turns out that you can, the, the format that we use for, not surprisingly, the format that we use for simulation, the SDF format, is essentially a superset of ERDF. Um, and so ERDF has the ability to set things like mass and inertia properties, um, but we don't need that. So you can skip over that for now. Um, and you can s set a whole bunch of other things, friction, stamping, uh, contact coefficients for, for contact uh, modeling. And so go lightly over this physical properties. Just skim that. We'll circle back to that tomorrow. And this is, uh, don't skip the Zacro file, because um, uh, the um, uh, Zacro file simplifies uh, the modeling considerably. So if I look at um, Erdif 06 flexible Erdif. So this is a. Um, the URDF for that, um, that R2-D2 robot. And, you know, I can slide down here and it just goes on for quite a while. There's a lot of stuff in it. Um, and none of it is parametric. So if I want to change anything, I need to ed edit a whole bunch of numbers. Um, and uh, so I've asked you to uh, create a Zacro file. Um, you can, if you, if for some reason you're having trouble with the Zacros, you can just do an URDF, but better if you do a Zacro file for this robot. And uh, just a simplified one. And um, and so and I've asked you to create a package called EduMip My Robot, um, and it'll have subdirectories, a launch subdirectory, an RViz subdirectory for an RViz configuration, a source because you're going to write a C plus uh, plus function to publish joint states, and an ERDEF. Um, my robot, Erdif. And so, uh, 
getting back to the assignment. So these are the tutorials. So what I'd like you to do is um, I'd like you to create a package called Edumit My Robot, and I'd like you to uh, make a system which does this. Um, and you're going to write the Edumit My Robot State Publishers that subscribes to, uh, sorry, the um, that subscribes to Edumit State and it publishes a joint state message, and um, and then you're going to run a robot state publisher that's going to that's going to read the joint states and publish a TF, and it'll also read your um, um, uh, robot description. And um, and so uh, I recommend that you make your URDEF as a um, as a Zacro file, um, and uh, I use these approximate dimensions for the robot, just so you don't have to get out your calipers, um, and. Uh, I'd like you to make a uh, and my Zacro file. Uh, my Zacro file looks like this uh, for the edge of The one that I used this when I was uh, showing it the other day. Uh, I just um, so to, in the in the Zacro tutorial, which is tutorial number four, um, uh, you basically need to add this syntax to the beginning of your Zacro file. Um, and this file is called edumitmyrobot.zacro. Uh, and uh, we can define some uh, macros, some properties uh, that are parametric. And then everything else works the same as an URDEF, but you can see that you can use parametric uh, properties. Um, and since everybody's a programmer here, I don't really have to say much about that. Um, don't worry about the inertial properties right now. Um, uh, we don't really need those today. Um, but this defines uh, the edumit body, which is just a rectangle. Um, I'm just using, using a rectangle. And um, um, I tilted the body at a, um, I tilted it back um, uh, along, uh, it pitched back um, at uh, minus 0 0.17 radians, so it tilted back. And remember, uh, 0 0.017 radians is one degree, so that's about 10 degrees. Um, uh, and so that's the base link, um, and uh, then there's a left wheel and a right wheel, left wheel, and called wheel L and wheel R, and then we need two joints, joint R and joint L, that connect the edgement body to wheel L and wheel R, and we need to position those uh, wheels, and then this other stuff down here in this file is, is stuff that's not going to be used today, so you can ignore it. We need to specify some initial things for gazebo. Uh, the, this is a, a coefficient of friction, a Coulomb and viscous friction, uh, that it needs in order to do uh, the physics simulation. But uh, we don't need that today. And um, and I'd ask you to make an RViz initialization file um, uh, that has these things loaded up. And the way you create your RViz initialization file the first time um, is you, uh, you run RViz uh, with a robot description, and then you add a marker for a robot, and you set the parameter names appropriately. Um, so you set the parameter name, the robot description should be there. If there is a robot description and things are being published, um, then the robot will magically appear. And, um, and then once you have this set up properly and we can help you, um, then you save the file. Uh, in the default location, and next time you bring it up, it'll use that same file. Um, so, the magic sauce that we need finally is for this to work with this data flow. Um, we need an Edumit My Robot State Publisher, um, and uh, my file. Uh, looks like this. So the main, it does almost nothing. Um, and the main does almost nothing. It um, defines a message called uh, edumip state, and I can find that because up here I've used the standard format. Um, I want to include sensor message, joint state. I want to, because I'm going to publish those. 
um, I want to transform, I, I want to be able to publish a TF transform, so I need the TF transform broadcaster.h. And I also want to uh, be able to subscribe to EduMIP message, EduMIP state, which is um, uh, defined in that EduMIP messages uh, uh, project. So going back down to main, um, um, I'm defining a message called EduMIP state, doing calling ROS init, uh, making a node handle, uh, creating a joint publisher, um, and um, I'm, I'm, uh, the I'm telling the joint publisher that I'm going to publish a joint state message, which is part of the sensor message package. Um, and um, I'm saving a pointer to that variable, uh, to that publisher, to a global variable, uh, which is, and actually this is, shouldn't be here, this should be commented out. It doesn't do anything. That's just editing error. Um, and um, so I'm computing a sin here in order to have a simple program without a, without a complicated class um, where um, the joint state publisher uh, is, uh, has a global pointer. And then uh, I'm going to create a subscriber and I'm going to subscribe the callback function edumip state callback to the topic edumip state state with a Q size of 100 and, d and then block on a raw spin. And the callback is here. Uh, this is my uh, 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 not good programming practice global pointer um, that um, uh, uh, I did just to make this a simple program. So I wanted each of these things to be less than one page. And so we need to do two things. We want to, uh, with this in the callback, we need to read the edge map state and we need to publish a joint state message and we need to publish the TF transformation of the robot base. And with those information, then other things will take care of everything else. Um, and so um, I publish a ROS info and a printf. Um, that's kind of silly. Really don't need that. Um, and um, and then uh, uh, when we come, we have an edumip state, and we've got static uh, transformations here. And I'm going to set the world to edumip uh, transform. This is this thing. I'm going to set the transform origin uh, to the edumip state body frame northing minus body frame easting and 0 0.34. And 0 0.34 is hard coded. That's the radius of the wheel, uh, 0 0.034, so that the edumip doesn't appear that it's actually immersed in the, f in, the, uh, in, the f in the ground plane. And then I'm going to set the orientation of that frame um, uh, to uh, uh, 0 for roll uh, theta for pitch because the theta is the pitching back or forward of the body um, and then uh, the body frame heading uh, they used heading with wrote positive heading is positive rotation about it above the axis and so I changed that uh, so that it makes proper sense for heading in a compass sense so that increasing compass heading is to the right not to the left um, and uh, then I with that quaternion assigned, I assign it to the world to edumit transmission. So we've assigned both the translation and rotation um, to the um, uh, transformation. And, and <coughs> at that point, uh, I could have published this transformation right there. So I probably should have put this TF send transform up here because we're done setting the transformation. So this really probably belongs up here. And um, it's called TF. I called it TF Broadcaster because it's just publishing. Um, but um, but uh, typically there's uh, a whole bunch of processes uh, nodes that that actually um, uh, subscribe to TF, and so uh, there may be a lot of consumers. And then and now let's make a joint state message. Um, so the joint state is a joint state message, which is uh, a variable dimension um, here. It's called joint state, standard thing. And it's got a method to uh, resize. It's got an array of names, um, which are uh, string arrays, uh, an array of, um, of uh, double precision numbers, uh, float, uh, um, float 64s. And so uh, we'll use the method resize 
to resize the uh, name array to two names and positions to two positions. And we'll assign joint L and joint R. These are the exact same names that are specified in the, um, in the URDEF or ZACRA file, literal. And then um, I'll set the header timestamp. Um, and then I'll assign uh, the, uh, the wheel angles. And my convention is to use radians uh, for everything. And then we'll publish the joint state. Um, and um, and in the launch file, so this is the launch file. I've asked you to make a launch file um, that so you're you're going to separately run. Um, the edumit balance program on your edumit, um, separately logged in, and uh, these two uh, ends both need to use the same ROS core. Uh, you launch a joystick node. You'll uh, uh, launch the node that you wrote this morning, uh, which reads the joystick message and publishes a twist. Um, and then you'll launch um, a C++ node that we just looked at um, that you'll write, which subscribes to uh, the edge of state and it publishes a TF and a robot joint states um, and and then you'll use the uh, pre-built robot state publisher which will read the robot description and the robot uh, base TF and the robot joint space and it'll pu publish the rest of the TFs um, and then here's where we're loading in the robot description um, we want to have a parameter name called robot description um, if you have more than one more robot it'd be like robot description this and robot description that um, and uh, this is the the Zacro uh, the mantra to get uh, the description filtered through Zacro, and then I'm going to just find the package that I'm working in, which is called Edgemit My Robot, and I'm going to load the file Edgemit My Robot Zacro. It pipes through Zacro, out comes an ERDF on the other side, and so the robot description is a fully populated ERDF. And then I'm going to launch Arvis here. Um, so package name. Uh, node name, package name, and type is rvis, and I need to give it an argument of, uh, and you'll see examples of this in the um, in the tutorials that you're doing, um, uh, and the uh, you need to find the rvis initialization file. By default, rvis initialization files are in the rvis subdirectory of your package, um, so make an rvis subdirectory of your package, and. Another argument that Arvis takes is you can specify by name what the fixed world for AVM is. Um, and so in this case, um, I've um, uh, specified the fixed world frame. And um, required equals true, my recollection is that um, uh, causes it to fail um, if it doesn't find this, but I'd have to check on that. I'm a little foggy on that one. So if we run this, um, If we run this guy, um, nothing's going to happen if I don't have a edge map going. Let me just bring my edge online. Sorry about that.
Okay, so I'm up over Wi-Fi. So here, um, top side, I'm going to run Ross Core. Check to see whether I have connectivity. Yeah, connectivity. And, and I'm going to run the Edge of Ross Balance program. Nothing's going to happen here until I run some other stuff topside. Um, so, this is the package that I've asked you to create Edge of My Robot and a launch file which we're looking at right here. Um, and it's going to pop up a copy of our viz. Um, and here's the robot. Hold down the shift key and move things around. Um, oops, it helps if you right, use the right joystick. Um, and uh, it's good to introspect a little bit. Ross topic list um, and RQT graph. So we can see we're uh, we're doing this whole thing from joystick um, state uh, commands states um, uh, robot uh, state publisher publishing joint states and publishing TF robot state publisher publishing the rest of the TFs and it's good to introspect in here. Um, uh, so. Uh, Ross topic list edge map states we saw that earlier uh, sorry echo so those are the edge map states um, and um, notice that um, this example is very poorly namespaced. Really, everything like e the uh, joint states and other things should be prefixed by edge emit. Um, so properly done would, would do better than namespacing. This is, this is a bit of a chaotic example. Um, uh, Ross topic. Uh, echo. Uh, joint states. And so there they are, the joint left and joint right, and the values uh, in radians of the of the two wheel angles in absolute. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, TF echo. TF. And um, so we can. Uh, we're only seeing a screen full, but basically uh, there's a TF being published, uh, which is from world to, um, um, uh, so Ross uh, run TF view frames. Events frames dot PDF. And so you can see the topology of the geometry here. Um, and so the Edge of My Robot State Publisher is publishing this transformation. And the Robot State Publisher is publishing these two transformations. And uh, importantly, Ross Param list um, 
and uh, uh, this is the these are the things that are left as parameters for the different launches that have been run and uh, ROS version run ID and ROS distro we've seen before um, this just stores a signature for an individual launch robot description is new so ROS param get robot description and we can see that that's the uh, erdf file so it's actually not the name of the erdf file it's actually the contents um, and so in a multi-robot um, uh, case we'd have robot description one robot description two if they were different So I think that is basically what I wanted to share with you. Um, so um, I don't think it'll take you that long to get to the point where you're um, running something like that. Um, and you can experiment with these. You can see this is the robot model marker and the robot description parameters there. Um, and I've given some detailed examples and a couple uh, detailed comments uh, and suggestions on how to structure your um, uh, your package. Um, any questions? Okay, go for it. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs>